Hello, boys and girls, it's Fog. Well, I've been a bit busy over the last week or so, and so I haven't had much time to put together anything elaborate. But today, I thought I'd like to take just a moment and talk a little bit about mobs and mob grinders. I want to specifically address two issues that I've seen pop up a lot in recent mob grinder discussions. Number one, do I need to do anything fancy to get mobs to move with the new mob AI? And number two, how can I maximize the amount of spawn in my mob grinder? So to answer both of these questions, we first need to understand a little bit about mob behavior. When discussing most mobs, now slimes and endermen are a little different, but when discussing most hostile mobs, there are a few key numbers that are really helpful to remember. Those numbers are 16, 24, 32, and 128. Now, it's no coincidence that those are all divisible by 8. These are computers, after all. Powers of 2 are our friends. So they should be pretty easy for you to remember. 16 is the distance at which spawners activate. So get closer to 16 meters, and the spawner is going to start to spin. But I'm not going to talk about that one today. 24 is the distance at which mobs begin to spawn randomly in the world. 32 meters is the distance outside of which mobs stop moving. And that's been a bit of a source of controversy lately. And 128 is the distance outside of which mobs immediately despawn. Now let's go to a creative flat world I prepared because I'd like to demonstrate something. Those rings in the ground are at 16 meters. 32 meters, 24 meters, at 128 meters from that center X. If I stand right here and turn on hostile mobs, watch what happens. Pay particular attention to what happens between the two outer rings. Might be a little hard to see. Notice that mobs appear and disappear within this range. But more importantly, they move for five seconds before they stop moving, right after they appear. Do you see that skeleton there? He appeared and he walked straight for five seconds before he stopped moving. Now that means that all of those fancy contraptions designed to detect the presence of mobs and make them move by pushing them with water or pistons aren't really strictly necessary. So long as you can get those mobs to walk into a water stream within five seconds, you can move them wherever you want. Now I'm not saying that you can't get even more efficiency with some of those fancy mob detection systems. I'm merely saying that those of us who prefer to do things the cheap and easy way are not screwed by the newer mob AI. Also notice that there are no mobs at all outside of that far ring. It might be a little hard to see, but take my word for it. Outside of 128 blocks, you don't need to care about mobs at all. They won't be there. What this means is that so long as you control all of the spawnable area within a 128 meter radius, you can very easily maximize your spawn. Watch what happens when I put a roof over this area. Even though it's day out, so no hostile mobs can spawn in the light, well, except for slimes, they behave a little differently. Notice that I'm still getting very high spawn rates, but only in the covered area. Now that's not particularly new information to many of you, but with the new Anvil map format, it has some pretty profound implications for those of us who want to build mob grinders. It used to be that when you build a mob grinder, you had to do a ton of caving to light up as much ground as you could so that the only place where mobs could spawn was in your mob grinder. But now, there is a better way. With the new Anvil map format, worlds are now 256 blocks high. That's twice as much as 128. But more important, sea level hasn't changed at all. It's still at 64. So the implication is that all you need to do is build the killing platform of your mob grinder at 192 meters above sea level 
above an ocean, just like this one here, which is in my single player world. That puts you 128 meters above the sea level and therefore 128 meters out of range of any surface at all. There's no need to light up any caves. What's more, you don't even really need a lighting system because when you're not at your grinder, you're always going to be more than 128 meters away from it, so it can't possibly be creating any lag. This mob grinder of mine is a very simple mob grinder. It's inspired by one of Etho's designs, but I've made a couple of tweaks to it. But, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not rocket science or anything. Each level has a series of water troughs that look like this. Since the water troughs are so close to the spawn areas, any mob that spawns and walks in almost any direction for five seconds is bound to fall in. Those water troughs are two blocks deep, so once a mob's in them, it's not going to be able to get back out but that's shallow enough that they're not afraid to take the step. Now, this isn't 100% efficient. Mobs could turn around and walk in the wrong direction, get caught in the corners, things like that. But it's certainly close enough for my purposes. I've had no trouble at all getting decent spawn rates from this, and that's even in the latest snapshot build. As you can clearly see, the spawn rates are actually quite good. And this is really with only a modestly sized mob grinder. This provides more than enough gunpowder and arrows and bone meal for anything that I could possibly want to do. So anyway, hopefully you've learned something and you found this to be helpful. Either way, thanks for watching. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, and I will talk to you again later.